gemologists. Today we're going to discuss how gem deposits are formed. And that's going to be the heading of our lecture. Really what we've been doing over the last few classes is talking about geologic processes and the rock cycle and plate tectonics. And today we're now going to tie in how gems fit within all of those contexts. And so today's heading is going to be the geology, come on pen, here we go, geology of gem deposits. That's our primary heading. And Roman number one underneath this is going to be geologic occurrence. Geologic occurrences. So what I'm hoping you're doing is tracking along with me as I write these notes. I'll show pictures and make sketches from time to time. I've got my timer going for 15 minutes and so that's going to set the length of today's lecture. Well, we're going to have two different types of geologic occurrences. The first type is called a primary occurrence. And a primary occurrence is one that occurs in the hard rock. That's what a geologist would say. Where the crystal has directly nucleated and grown from a magma or a metamorphic rock or a hydrothermal fluid. So let's put that down as our, as our definition. We can say direct crystallization, or let's even do better than that. Let's say direct nucleation and growth and growth from, come on, from, from a magma metamorphic rock or hydrothermal fluid. Remember we talked about all these a couple weeks ago. When you picture one of these, I'd like you to imagine a rock like this ruby. Here I'm inserting a picture. Let me shrink this down a little bit. That's a little too big. This is what I want you to picture when you're picturing a primary rock. Here we have our primary gem occurrence. We have crystals of ruby embedded within a gneiss. In this case, this is from uh, Greenland. And that's opposed to the second type of and you can, if you want to put an example here, you could say a sapphire and a basalt, or a diamond and a kimberlite. That's opposed to the other type, which is going to be secondary. You probably could have guessed that. And a secondary gem deposit is one that's been enriched by erosion and weathering, some kind of transport by water, typically rivers. And so let's go ahead and put that definition out. Deposit of gems enriched by erosion and sediment transport. All right, so this is a sedimentary type of gemstone, where the other two were igneous. And let's go ahead and put here, typically rivers. If we want to picture a secondary gem deposit, let's throw this picture in. Oh, that's a little too big. I'm going to need to shrink it down. But before I do, what type of rock is this? Well, it's a sedimentary rock. You can see outsides class with fine grain matrix. The class surrounded, ah, this is a conglomerate. And right here, sitting within the conglomerate, is a diamond. And so this diamond did not crystallize from here, but it was transported here by sedimentary processes. If we found enough diamonds, this would be a rich gem deposit indeed. Okay, so now that is our two main types of deposits. And when we go under secondary deposits, there can actually be two different types here. One is called, they're almost spelled exactly the same. One is spelled alluvial with an E. And the other type is spelled alluvial with an A. And the big, the, the big difference here, both are secondary deposits, but the big difference here is that this is like, had little transport. The best way to picture what an alluvial one is, is that this is from like a landslide, a landslide type deposit. And this is fairly common where you have some kind of primary gem deposit, that gem deposit gets landslid down, maybe a cliff has collapsed, and you can get a alluvial gem deposit near the source, near primary source. Now that's different than alluvial, and alluvial is far more common. Should I put a little star here that says common? That's what it means here in my notes. And here we have long transport distance by rivers, and beaches. Long transport by rivers and sometimes beaches. And when I say long, 
I'm talking about this is both distance and time. Okay? It is a long-lived system. We should draw some of this out right now. So what I would we're going to do is we're going to draw a block diagram. And this block diagram, let's see, we'll start it here. And again, make your drawings cleaner than mine, right? I'm drawing in this notepad that's connected to my computer and it gets a little tricky to draw straight lines. So draw your straight lines, please. All right, here's a mountainside going down to a river. And then we're going to go up the other side. But that's not good enough. We're going to make this three-dimensional. So here's the land. Let's see, here's a river. Let's make our river kind of a meandering river. Here's the land coming down to it here. There's the other side of the river. Uh-oh, it got too skinny. Don't make yours so skinny like that. Oh, I can erase. How can I erase? If I come in there and erase, okay, let's fix this. We can fix this. Let's draw the river now, and here we're gonna, we're gonna curve the river. There, that's a little better. The mountain comes down to there. That's still a little weak, but okay. Then this has to come back here, and the mountain goes back up. Uh, we can sort of picture what's going on here, right? You've maybe drawn it slightly better than me. And what we have in an alluvial system, we can, let's see, blue. So here's the direction water's traveling, all right, in our river. And we need to get our gemstones in that river. We're going to do that by having them move down the side of this slope. So if we have a gem deposit, let's put a gem deposit right here. All right, maybe it's exposed in some cliff. How is it going to get down to the river? Well, it's going to get down to the river by following drainages like this one here. Here's another drainage over here. And they're going to go uphill usually. And you can take a diamond from this source. Oh gosh, draw the diamond really good. And the diamond will wash down and in, get into the stream, where eventually it'll become gravel on the riverbed, and it will be there a secondary alluvial deposit. Where here, what I drawn in red was the primary deposit. All right, can you picture that? If you want to, put some trees in. Yeah, that, that's beautiful. Put another tree in just to give it some scale. All right. That's what I want you to be picturing with primary versus secondary deposits. And there's our alluvial. But we need to do another drawing because what ends up happening is that, num okay, we're going to do a little one under here. Let's make sure that fits the scope. We have, nope, that's a two. So underneath this, we need to have be a little a. Have uh, that be a little a. And this is going to be paleo channel. And this is an important concept because we can mine modern rivers. It's like we have right there. But there are also ancient rivers that have existed that aren't active today. And that's what a paleo channel is. And that ends up being a fantastic place for mining and secondary. So let's call this an ancient waterway not active today. Not active today. And we should draw a sketch of a paleo channel. Here we're going to just be a bird's eye view looking down on a system. All right, so here's our map view. I'm going to go get blue for our modern river. And let's say our modern river flows through the landscape like this. All right, it's a meandering river. That is our modern channel. And we could mine the gravel bars that occur in that modern channel. They would occur in places where the water is moving very fast, right? That's where the gravels tend to concentrate. Okay, so this is, these would be gravels in the modern system that might be home to diamonds or sapphires. But if we go back in time, this river hasn't been in the same place. It's been able to migrate across a floodplain throughout this time. And so maybe what we could do is use our geology skills and find where the ancient river f once flowed. And so maybe here is the ancient river, All right, shown in black. That would be our paleo channel. And if we're miners, we'd start looking in places where gravels should be in that ancient deposit, and that's where we can find valuable commodity. Oh, there we go. So that's a bird's eye view. Let's just do another side view as well. This is a very drawing heavy lecture. Hopefully it's kind of fun to do because not only do modern rivers change their lateral position, they can also change their vertical position across a floodplain, and that creates um, terraces. So let's draw, this is going to be a side view, 
Here we're going down a few different terraces. These are terraces, don't have to draw them so angular, I suppose. And then here's our modern river. This is our modern flood plain. Here's our flood plain. There's our modern river, and we have these terraces that have been worn away by ancient action of the river. And so what you'll end up getting is the river used to have a paleo channel that was sitting here and laid through time. It migrated and it migrated down here and now it's sitting here and there's these beautiful gravels with gems that we can mine. But here's another place where there's a paleo channel and another place where there's a paleo channel. And in all of these we're going to find sand deposits and mud deposits but we can also find ancient gravel deposits from the paleo channels. And each of those could be the mother load for a new discovery of gems. So let's just label this out with raised terraces. And then here we're going to say ancient gravels in paleo channel. So this is a pretty interesting idea. People realized it about a hundred years ago, I guess in the United States for the gold rush. I want to tell you another somewhat interesting story of this when it has to do with beaches. And so I want to take you to, in this example, to the shores off of Namibia. Do you know where Namibia is? I spelled Namibia wrong. There's only one eye there at the end. So here, let's, let's do a really crappy drawing of Africa. Here's the coast of Africa coming down to South Africa. Well, Namibia is located right here. And within that area, there is a river. Let's make rivers blue. Here's a river. It's called the Orange River. And the Orange River has all these tributaries that drain huge portions of South Africa. Now, South Africa, you might know, is home to some of the most productive kimberlites that make diamonds. And so what's ended up happening through millions and millions of years is that they estimate that approximately one billion carats of diamonds have eroded from this area of South Africa, been pumped into the Orange River, Orange River system, and then exited out the delta into the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantic Ocean. So, all right, so we should, so what people started to find was all these beautiful diamonds and diamond deposits out in the ocean and along the beaches. What people have ended up, so the idea is then is, where? Do they go, does, does the ocean currents just leave them right here and they're all concentrated? Well, no. What ended up happening is there's something called a longshore current, and it has pushed, it's like wave action in the ocean, it has pushed the diamonds that have come out into the ocean to the north. And so this area is one of the most productive areas for diamonds in the entire world. They have have these, De Beers has an entire fleet of ships that sit out here with vacuum machines that just suck on the ocean floor trying to pull diamonds out. It's a real fascinating story about secondary diamonds. Well, now we're getting close to the end of this little mini lecture. And what I wanted to do to wrap it up was to talk about, let's see. No, that's it. That's the end of this lecture. We'll cut it off right here. And just a, as a quick idea about primary, all right, directly from the rock and secondary deposits, most of them alluvial, where you get abundant transport. Oh, we could do one other thing. Oh, here's what we'll do. One last drawing. Here's the last drawing, I promise. We could draw off the coast of Africa. What there ends up being is there's the modern... Oh, what a crappy drawing. Erase that. Erase, erase, erase. What we have is ocean, right? And that ocean is eroding into the African shore. All right? And then there's like a beach deposit. Well, we know that there can be gravels along beaches. All right? That can have diamonds. There can be gravels off the shore that can have diamonds. All right? this, is, this is the story with the Orange River in Namibia. But then what happens is sometimes sea level changes through time. And it produces these terraces, just like rivers make terraces. So if we draw this in three dimensions, we can kind of have this. There's the one terrace going back in 3D, going back in 3D. So we have this terrace. There's our block diagram. The seafloor comes down here. We have our ocean going like this and our waves. Are you tracking with it? I don't know. Maybe you're not tracking with it. Let's go black. All right. So this comes here. 
we go down, we go across, we go down, we go across. There we go. Oh, there's the timer that we got to stop. But what will end up happening is at other times, there are going to have been, let me put some trees here. Let's put some trees for scale. I bet your drawing looks so good compared to mine. But each of these probably used to be ancient beaches. So these are terraces. And the terraces used to be old beaches. And so along these old terraces, there's going to be gravel deposits that occur where the water was moving fast and the waves were crashing a million years ago or 10,000 years ago, right? And it's in these areas that we can also find diamonds. All right, so those are our examples of primary and secondary deposits. See you next time for the next lecture.